I'll just highlight a few differences between Patch TST and the Kronos models. As I said, Patch TST is patch based, whereas Kronos is auto regressive. It's not patch based and it is auto regressive. Patch TST is patch based, but it's once true. The model size we've already talked about. In terms of zero shot capability, which means just taking the model off the shelf and then using it for inference, the Kronos model is going to be quite a bit stronger. It performs very well on a custom application, even with no training, whereas the patch TST performance is not going to be quite as good. The forecast horizon is fixed for patch TST. It's flexible for Kronos. Multivariate support. I'll talk about that a bit later. Confidence intervals. So patch TST, it gives you out numbers. There are no buckets and there are no probabilities associated with buckets for the output. So there's also no notion of forecasting confidence. Whereas Kronos, because you have a soft max, you have a probability distribution over which bucket the output is going to be in that allows you to get a confidence interval over the outputs. Training speed is going to be faster for patch TST. It's smaller for fine tuning. Typically you would fully fine tune patch TST because it's a small model and cheap to fine tune. With Kronos, it's a bit bigger. You can lower a fine tune. It's also not that big, so you could fully fine tune. For context length, the patch TST does support longer context because it converts the inputs into patches. So you can fit more inputs than you can with Kronos. And last of all, this is a very rough guideline. I used about 8,000 rows to do training. Probably you need ballpark that amount if you want to do training. And that seems to be sufficient to do full fine tuning on patch TST or to do some kind of lower fine tuning on the Kronos model. The last thing to mention here is multivariate support. So the way both these models work is if you have two time series that you want to predict and they're both related, for example, you might have temperature and you might have a demand of electricity. Both of these models will treat those separately and they will use the same set of weights. And that's possible because of how those numbers are normalized on the way in. Now there's a more advanced form of multivariate analysis where the inputs would have cross interactions, which could be cross, cross attention or mixing. And in principle, it seems that would be nice because it gives you more predictive power. What's found empirically in these papers is that having cross interactions tends to result in overfitting. And so you do better by actually keeping the channel separate and only using a given input to predict itself rather than having these cross interactions. But I will show you a parameter you can turn on in the patch TST model if you want to try out cross attention. With Kronos, there's no way to turn it on. So you'd have to manually introduce it or you'd have to introduce some cross interactions after making the forecast.